Well, this is Fritz's new place to hang out. He's got a real tough life here. <laughs> okay, so I ran outside. <laughs> I just kicked my shoes off. <laughs> so professional. Oh, hey guys. All right, let me turn this down. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. I'm in the process of starting some canning today. And there are the dogs barking for you again. <laughs> so here's the deal, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. I just brought in the last, I, I'm pretty confident, the last of my tomatoes for the season. I've got one or two out there that might make it, but other than that, we are done, son. So what I'm doing right now, I have cut all of them up, cored them and cut them all up. I am starting to simmer them. And then what I've done is I have chopped an onion, um, an orange pepper, a couple green peppers, put some garlic in there. And I am um, pretty much just kind of, that's not really a roast, just kind of cooking them up. I really like to cook up the onions and peppers and soften them before I do anything with them, such as salsa or marinara or anything like that. So this is just gonna be a tomato sauce. I've also got my uh, homegrown basil, chopped it up, got some oregano, salt and pepper, just very basic. And don't forget that when you are canning with tomatoes, you need that salt and you will need lemon juice, baby. So I'm not to that phase yet. So right now, I'm just prepping. I'm just cleaning the kitchen, getting everything chopped, cooking, whatever all of that sort of stuff. So that's what we're doing. So I just want to welcome back to the channel. A couple of you are asking about elderberry. So before we talk about the topic, let me go ahead and tell you this right now. Um, I did process elderberry syrup. Several of you have asked questions in terms of how did you do your elderberry? Well, I have a, a video or two on elderberries, elderberry syrup, etc., etc. And this year has been a bumper crop. Like I'm, st I'm still getting elderberries. The birds have not taken all of them. I guess they said, leave that girl alone, honey. She is getting her immune system up. So let me tell you right now, and I'm not gonna talk you through the process. In terms of making the actual syrup, you're gonna need fresh berries or even berries that you have frozen because that's how you shake them, shake them off, shake it off. Um, off of the actual stemming if you choose, separating from the green. You don't wanna process the greens. No, 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 just the dark, rich purple. Um, and I made elderberry syrup. I already have a video on that, okay? Change it up how you wish. Now, when I made it this time, I didn't add any sweetener because I had so much elderberry and elderberry syrup, so I did not add the honey, okay? But adding ginger, adding cloves, adding cinnamon, let it simmer, you know, and, and get that juice. We call it syrup. Um, from there, you can make jelly. Uh, here, what I did is I processed in pint jars I added a tablespoon of lemon juice to it and I processed them in the water bath, okay? Um, some people do this, some people don't. I did. Now, in addition to that, I also put some into some jars and I've kept them in the fridge because I'm drinking elderberry syrup in my waters every single day. I'm trying really hard to easily drink and it's not a problem right now because I'm running. My 5K is tomorrow, but um, I'm drinking three or four of these a day. I think these are 32 ounces. Does that, does that seem right to you? Well, I'm putting like in one or two of them, I might put a tablespoon or two of the actual elderberry syrup itself. So I'm doing that every single day, okay? But let me show you what else I did. Hang on, this is starting to heat up. You can see an entire mixture of my tomatoes in here. A lot of people ask me, they're like, do you use this certain type of tomato for this and this type of tomato for that? Honey, I use any tomato I want for anything I want to make, okay? I do not discriminate. All tomatoes are magic. <laughs> and you can see this is starting to cook up 
really, really nice. We want to get this nice and soft. And no, I'm actually doing it with the skins as well because I didn't feel like messing with trying to blanch and peel today. So hang on and I'll show you those elderberry magic things I have. Hang on. Okay, so this doesn't look great, but what you're actually seeing in there together is elderberry syrup ice cubes. That's what I did. I had extra syrup, so what I did is I took out my ice cubes and I poured um, two or three pints and I filled up my ice cube trays and I put them in the uh, freezer for about 24 hours, let them get nice and frozen. And then I took them out, let them thaw just a hair, just to pop them out, took them and put them in baggies. And I'm gonna be using that for teas and for drinks and whatever I need to in the future, uh, in the near future for fall and winter. So that's what I did there. But I'm telling you, elderberry syrup is easy to make. I have a whole video on it. You can use fresh berries or you can buy dried berries. Let me show you my dried berries because some of you are asking about that too. I don't know if this company is still producing or selling um, the dried elderberries, but I have a half of a pack of it and it was the Sunburst, right? Superfoods, oh, it smells so good. Um, and these are dried berries and you're literally gonna do, you're, my whole video is actually using these. You can get these online, you can get them at health food stores. You could probably get uh, a pound or so for somewhere in the ballpark of 20 bucks. If you wait till December, they always are more expensive. So it's always wise to get them in the late summer, early, early fall and put them away. Um, but this is what it is. And you're just going to pour them out and you're going to steep them to get the syrup out of them, just like you would with any other dried fruit. It is no big deal. So you can do fresh berries, you can do freeze dried berries, um, all of that. Um, you can make your syrups. There's jams, there's jams and jellies. Um, clearly I've made <laughs> cutie titty little ice cubes. So just know that there's a lot of versatility with this and you can add to or take away from your elderberry as you need to. If I'm not mistaken, I think I processed these 10 minutes. Water bath these for 10 minutes. I'm less than a thousand feet as far as my elevation. So you need to do, do a little homework and do what works best for you. Listen, if you're ever in doubt on processing something, um, adding a little more time according to what you think you need to isn't going to hurt it. Okay. So it was either, was it, 10? it was 10 minutes. Usually though, when you end up water bathing some, if you leave them in there and just turn the, the stove off, the stove top off by default, you're actually processing them probably a little bit longer. So do your homework, do your research, check your books and check your manuals. Okay. Now let's get back to what we need to talk about. So here's the bottom line. We're going to make this video short and sweet. First of all, I want you to go and listen to one of the latest videos by Glenn Beck on his YouTube channel. I think he released it on his Wednesday night special. It's about the Fed, it's about inflation and all the things that are going on right now and the economics that we are experiencing right now and just how groovy they really, really are. You probably know most of this. For those of you that are in still any form of denial, um, <laughs> I think it's going to help bring you out of it. I mean, how can you be in denial about all the things that are going on that we've been seeing the last two years that we've been talking about constantly on this channel? Um, because it's all here. And folks, we are in a world of hurt with our economy. I really encourage you to absolutely prepare and, and learn skills, obviously, but I want you to also be paying attention to some trustworthy um, economic channels. Um, and they are all different. Just listen to what a lot, some of them have to say, make, form your own opinions. But at the end of the day, it's like this. The American people are getting kicked sideways, okay? The average American now is living paycheck to paycheck. Most people have little to no savings. People are taking out of their retirement and discretionary spending is probably pretty much coming to a complete halt by the end of September into October for multiple reasons. We have hit the wall, okay? We're hitting the wall. And inflation has not gone down, no matter how much they try to lie to you and tell you that it has. That is the biggest pile of hockey that there ever was. We've talked about that many times. When you go to the grocery store, when you fill your gas tank, when you pay your property taxes, when you are paying 20% more, 20% more, for you to buy back to school items for your kids this year. Whether you homeschool or not, they go to college or not, whether they're in public school or not, surely you are having to buy paper, pencils, a backpack, the very basics at some point. 20% more than last year. 
So no, don't tell the average American, don't tell the average mama that inflation has come down and that all of this that we are concerned about or we've been talking about is doomsday. Those people can go suck a giant egg. And if they need one, I just got the most special goose egg this morning. So hit it. here you go, honey. Try it. Try that. That's pretty much where all the mothers of America are now, okay? The ones that have their minds on right and that are working and are trying to get by and save and build a future for their own children. This is what's going on. They're breaking down the, the future for our kids. <clears throat> this isn't about you. It's not about me. It's about enslaving your children. And that's where they're going to get it. They're playing the long game. And they are breaking us down spiritually if they can. They are breaking us down economically all day long. Because when people can't afford to get to work and back, when people can't afford to pay food, you know, feed their kids, feed their chickens, feed their dogs, when people are scared to death of losing their homes, when people can't, you know, do simple things like put new tires on their car so they can go to work, um, all of the simple things. I'm not talking about going to the beach or going to a demonic Disney uh, or, or um, all these foolish things. No, no, no. I'm talking about day-to-day -day living. And if you don't have children, I don't mean this to be sound ugly because there's a lot of good people out there that chose or don't have children, but they have, you know, net nieces and nephews and people in their family they care for. But there really is a big difference in not having a, having kids and having kids and you're working your buns off to just ensure that they can eat a PBJ every day, Okay. So when people tell you that things aren't bad and things aren't doomsday, they're lying to you. In fact, nowadays when people say these things aren't happening or they, they try to lie to you about it, I just think now, I don't, even, I, I don't even think that they're stupid anymore. I think they're part of the agenda. I do. Thought that a long time ago, but I definitely certainly think that now and a lot of people have definitely proven who they are. So you have to be very careful. You have to realize what is going on in your world and what is going on around us. And let me say this right now. If you, if, if one of my sons was standing right here in this room with me, I would be saying to them what I'm about to say to you. For the love of Pete, if you have a job, do not quit your job. This is not the time to be quitting your job. This is not the time to be pipe dreaming. This is the time to be serious. Be working your butt off if you have to, you know, if you have to get an extra job. There was times in my life and times probably in your life that you had to work more than one job or you had to work opposite shifts or overnights or extra hours. If you, extra hours, whatever, if there is something you can do to continue to strengthen what you've got in terms of your employment or to add to your employment, take advantage of that now. Please take advantage of that now. If you are on the fence about retiring, I'm going to beg you not to retire. Unless you have an extreme, extreme situation that is causing you to quit your job, change jobs, or retire, please consider trying to hang in there as long as you can, okay? Because we are very likely, very soon, going to get to a point where you're going to regret that decision. I've said that in the past. I don't know the timeline of things, but I do know they're lying to you because here's the thing I heard last night. Some doofus was sitting there saying, well, we might see a recession, in 2024. Listen, dude. Listen, Joker. We've been in a recession. I don't need a PhD in astrophysics to sit here and go, wow, I was paying X and now I'm paying X times 10. Or I was paying X, now I'm paying X times 3. You know, whatever. You're not stupid, people. They're banking on you going along with this theory that you're stupid. You're not. You are absolutely no dummy. And I better turn this down. It's getting hot in this kitchen. <laughs> so listen to me. Be doing all the things. I know that sounds repetitive, but I think we all need to say it to ourselves every single day. Do something. Can something. Save something. Work something. Go run your driveway. If you need more money, this is so... It's frustrating to say this because I know that I'm somebody's going to say, well, that's easy for you to say. We're doing everything that we can here in this family to secure ourselves. My husband works a full-time job. My husband works 
every hour on the hour that he has to. And it's not 40 hours. And then we run our farm and then we're raising our kids. So what I'm trying to tell you is, is if you are in a situation, folks, where you don't have a steady income from at least one of you, if you're married, <clears throat> might want to have a conversation tonight. Okay? I'm just saying. And I'm not trying to be in anybody's business. I don't want to know your business. I'm simply telling you what I'm telling my own kids. You work every hour you can work. If you have to get an extra job delivering pizzas two nights a week, do it. You can still do your school. You can still have your dreams. I'm not telling you to give those up. But what I am telling you right now is if you have the opportunity to have employment, that is a blessing. Even if you hate it, believe me, I've been there in the past. I understand. Okay. I get it. But when I got to a point where I, I worked my butt off and we made the right decisions and we paid off our debts, I didn't mind going to work because my goal was to sock money away as long as I could. And thank God we did that. So don't be discouraged. Look at everything differently. Don't look at your job or not retiring as chains on your arms or whatever on your feet. No, 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 no. You're outsmarting things. You're planning better. You're hanging in there better. You have to change your perspective. Because one of these days, if this continues the way that it is continuing with interest rates, credit card debt, national debt, inflation that is coming back around. Start singing Carly Simon because she's coming back around again. Folks, your job will be the ultimate blessing that God provides for you. Hang in there. All right, guys, I'm going to get off here. We're going to move to the next phase. I'm going to swirl this up. And I'm going to add all that yummy stuff over there. And then we're going to have several pints of good homegrown tomato marinara mixture something sauce. I use it in spaghetti and meatloaves and all kinds of things. You can transform it into salsa if you get all crazy if you want to. Uh, all kinds of potentials. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So that's what we're doing today. That's the goal. So I love you guys. Thank you for your support. Hang in there. And go listen to that video by Glenn Beck. Um, it just came out last night, which is in, it, it's his Wednesday night special. You really need to hear it. You really, he breaks it down better than I ever could. Love you guys. Stay busy. Okay. Stay busy. Stay busy. We'll see you on the next video and Godspeed.